Hello, this is Abby Mickey, host of the Wheel Talk podcast, and I'm here to convince you to sign up for membership for escapecollective.com. Now, the reason that this is important is because we are a membership-based media model, and that means that we are not beholden to sponsors, but it does come down to you, the members of escapecollective.com. Escape Collective is your hub for all things cycling. There's just new stuff churning out every day, and the members of the Escape Collective make it possible. So thank you to everyone who's signed up, and please, if you enjoy what we do, then, you know, put your money where your ears are and sign up. Become a member. You can become a member at escapecollective.com slash join. That's escapecollective.com slash join. Thank you so much. Hello and welcome everybody to the Champs Elysees episode of the Escape Collective Tour Daily. I'm Kelly Fretz. Johnny Long, where are we? We are standing just past the finish line, the place where if you've got an accreditation, you go every year. You can kind of sneak on and then walk the shops after, which hopefully we'll do. We've just watched uh, Jumbo Visma sort of celebrate, hanging off the back with his Jumbo Visma teammates. And the sprint is starting to take shape now. It's taken a while for the sprint teams to get organized. We've had Tade Pogaccia attacking off the front, which is I mean, not what usually happens. He's there right now. Look, there he is. Oh, he is. He's, He's at, the at the very front of the peloton Again. with 1.2 kilometers to go. He's going to lead out Matthew Tr- Van der Poel, maybe? Matthew Trenton, where is he? Don't know. This is why we're not commentators. Yeah, Rob Hatch no and idea what happens. <laughs> no idea what's going on. Pagat just pulled off. It is now, I think, Van der Poel on the front as they turn the final corner. I'm finishing straight now. No, he's dropped it. He did a lead out. Vanderpool. Yes, it is Van. Followed is by Mohoric. Mohoric. Jasper Philipson is right out there with uh, Groenewegen on his wheel. Oh, oh. Alexander Kristoff. Kristoff just got out. stuck in Kristoff corner. Here they come. There it goes. Yeah, Mads Pedersen in the wheel as well. Again? Vanderpool doing the double lead out. Just did a lead out, stopped doing a lead out, started doing a lead out again. And here they come. It's already happened, but we're waiting to watch it on TV because we couldn't see. It looks like it was Philipson. Oh, who was it? It was Philipson. Philipson. Corner there, Philipson. Tight one, though. It's beautiful out here in the Champs-Élysées. Uh, we love this stage because they let us wander around in a closed now, shop. Now what happens? Tadej Pogacar has just gone past, rolled past. Another great day. Matej Mohoric has stopped just straight in front of us. This is quickly developing into, into a sort of F1 pit walk situation <laughs> because you're just walking around, waiting to get told off. Trying not to be in the way, uh, but just trying to soak in the atmosphere. Riders rolling to a stop everywhere. Nuns Peter's just ahead of us. He's being taken somewhere. Surely not doping control on the final day. Uh, that's a kind of a not the best way you want to finish a tour. Johnny, we're going to pretend that we're making a podcast and also pose for a photo that Josh Robinson, the Wall Street Journal, is taking for us. There we go. Slight pause in the podcast, and Josh <laughs> Robinson is a good, a good photo. We're walking up now towards. Oh, it's close! They just showed the replay. Ooh. Oh, oh, it's actually a Bora guy in second. Is that Jordi, Jordi Moose? Oh, Yama Visma is still on the, on the road. They've lined up. They're celebrating, fist pumping. We're on OTF watch. OTF watch, everyone. Here they come. We're watching as uh, UAE is hanging out. Everyone slowly rolling in. It's very nice, actually. You can see them all roll in. Everyone's really happy visually and spiritually to be done right now. Should we stick a microphone in front of some people? Uh, yeah, we need to find the right person, though. Uh, ben O'Connor's over there. Maybe him. You have to judge who's not completely exhausted and who doesn't want to immediately get on the biz and doesn't want any more bother. Let's, uh, let's walk this way. Yeah, we're walking back over. Okay. Tim de Klerk's got a bit of a grimace on his face as he comes past us. The medical car there with uh, Alex Kirsch behind and Matthias Schellenmoser. Bahrain boys just in front of us, Wout Poles, talking to Sonia. Pale Bilbao. Stage winner. Pale Bilbao. Ben O'Connor's got a big smile on his face, just done a little high five with Oliver Narsen. 
Want to go ask Mate how happy he is? Mate, got a minute for the podcast? Yes. How happy are you that it's over? Uh, super happy. I think we can be proud of uh, what we've achieved in this race this year with uh, with my teammates in uh, Team Marine Victorious. So, yeah, we're going to celebrate tonight. You had a hell of a tour this year. What was the most special memory, do you think, winning, obviously? but I think... Um, the most special memory, uh, yeah, obviously winning the stage, it was very emotional for all of us uh, because, uh, yeah, after, after all we've been through, it uh, bond us closer together. So, uh, yeah, we were, uh, we are in a very nice place now. What's the first thing you're going to do when you get home? Embrace, uh, hug my, hug, hug my children. Nice. Thank you. Congrats, Mate. Congrats. Nice to with Mate there. He's just a lovely man. A present guy. Uh, hi, Mike Woods. How happy are you right now? Very. <laughs> Extremely looking for my team to do a photo. Go do it. Go do your photo. We All won't right. stop you. All right. Thanks. Congratulations. Aid to our Citroen, doing a quick photo here on the Champs. Arc the Champ behind. That's the shot, really. Everyone yeah. there. Uh, also uh, Bahrain there. Should we go try to photo bomb Bahrain? No. <laughs> I think. Oh. Oh, Fred Wright's decided the photo's going somewhere else. Oh, has Jordy Moose has Jordy Moose won? <laughs> Jordy Moose has won. <laughs> what the hell? Wait, I what? sure it was Jasper Phillips and Jordy Moose has won on the Champs Elysees on stage 21 in the Tour what? de France. So the reason we say that is because he was just ushered back toward the podium, smiling a lot, smiling a lot with a whole bunch of people running around him, and that is usually a pretty good indication of winning. Uh, Hugo, we're watching Jack Haig chant to Tadej Pogacar. If he comes back this way, we'll ask him what's going on. Joshua Robinson's got a smile on his face. What have you just seen, Joshua? Was it something on the shumps or something on your phone? <laughs> no, I've seen you guys. Uh, I thought I'd lost you, so I'm pleased to see you all on the shumps and that you all made it. Oh, the podium's going to run us over. Yeah, we need to move this way. <laughs> Shooting out of Philippe Rolls in. The, the podium comes in on a truck afterward because it has to get... It's in the Champs-Élysées. <laughs> Here comes Jasper Phillips and doesn't look too happy. Uh, you, yeah, a little bit unhappy there. Doesn't look that happy. I said that a bit loud and I think he realized we were talking about him. <laughs> but it's in the tour, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, I think we should get on the other side of this podium so we don't get stuck yes. over here. Harry, our friend Harry, the photographer's over there. We can grab a quick word with him. He's not going to say no. Harry, yeah. how happy are you to be finished? I'm stoked, but I actually missed the finish because I was watching the TV. <laughs> and, I, and I didn't realise there would be a delay. I was shooting. Well, I wasn't shooting. I was watching the TV, ready to shoot. And then I was like, oh, the riders are beside me. <laughs> Remember, everyone, Harry is available for hire for all of your bike races. <laughs> Professional. <laughs> all right, let's keep, keep going this way. Let's keep walking. Keep this Sorry, way. I, really, I forgot I'm attached to you by the <laughs> microphone. We'll keep going around. Oh, the all of Lotto Destiny have uh, white headbands on, white head sweatbands on, which uh, Frederick Friesson might need because he's completely bald, so there's <laughs> nothing to mop up all that sweat. <laughs> yeah, we're about to get like locked on the wrong oh, side of the podium. We are trying to quickly come down here. Mauro Giannetti is beckoning his team over here so they don't get blocked out either. I imagine <laughs> it'll be easier for them to get past if they do. <laughs> but we've got to be quick and sneaky. There are riders coming around us all the time now. Where are we gonna get? Are we gonna get told off here? Now nah, we're just gonna walk. Okay. And, uh, Do you think the microphones make us seem like we are supposed to be here? Do not make eye contact okay. with any of the security personnel. Okay. Good, good plan. Good plan. If you can hear that, that is the podium being wheeled into place. <laughs> and we are also walking in a very straight line just to make sure that we don't accidentally knock any riders <laughs> off after they finish the race. Because we are. Oh, let's. Here we go. Here are the Bora boys. Let's go. In full chorus. Their shirts 
Their shirts say power meets shower. Eh? Their shirts say power meets shower. Ah. Oh, more more podium. Gonna about get run over by more podium. This is There's so much podium. Something. Oh, the beers are already out. The beers are out. The Bora Boys have their beers already cracked, ready to go. You don't want to interrupt too many of them, but I'll try and get Jack Hague's attention <laughs> if he's got a minute. He's coming over. Here he goes. Jack Hague, congratulations on finishing the Tour de France. How happy are you to be in Paris? Incredibly happy. I'm very happy that's over. It was uh, quite hard, actually. <laughs> Uh, we saw you chatting to Tade Pagacha just at the finish there. What were you saying? Were you asking him what he was doing off the front of the bunch there? or No, funnily enough, uh, he was asking whether I get got a rest or not because I've been racing so much. He said, hey, and you get to see your family? He said, yeah, I get to see my family. And uh, I actually I said uh, thank you to him because I think he made the tour this year quite exciting. Definitely. What are you most looking forward to about having finished? What have you got, what have you got as a treat coming up? I, to be honest, I just want to go home and see my family. I've uh, barely been at home this year with all the race program that I've had, and um, I'm looking forward to seeing my son and my wife. <laughs> Perfect. Well, congratulations. Thanks, guys. Well appreciate it. See ya. Congrats. Uh, we're in the Bora photo. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I think we need to keep moving back. Yeah, I think we're moving, still in moving. the way. Cool, but... <laughs> what? I did not know. Well, I kind of did know, but Bora have really taken up a, a level this year. They with have. The, uh, so, the celebration. So they, they, these big tents are the part of the reason why a company would sponsor a Tour de France team is you also then get a big old tent that you can put all of your important clients in and things like that. And so that's the Bora folks that we were just uh, listening to. They have been imbibing for much of the afternoon and are now very excited that their guy just won the bicycle race. Uh, Valentin Madoua, the French champion, has just uh, cycled past with a bottle of Prosecco. Tade Pagaccia is here, he's off his bike. He's walking over to say hello to someone. Don't Shake hands of the guests in the UAE team Emirates sort of section. Still taking selfies, I imagine that's what he spends most of his time doing when he's not on a bike. Yeah, that is a... Oh, he's taking the selfie now for the fans. That's a better way to do it. Yeah, I think you can describe the Sham says non-stop vibes. Eh? It's non-stop vibes. It is. It's really Wall nice. to wall. It's also amazing how quickly they put the infrastructure out. There's like an army of guys in in fluorescent vests just like moving everything. It's uh I bet if you like sped it up, you would make it on one of those Instagram accounts that are like engineering marvels. Oh, I know which guy that is. That's the guy from Plume, the tech company that sponsors his uh, juniors team. Oh, that's nice. They're taking a picture now, all of the guys crouch down. Tully looks absolutely erect, I will say that. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He does. He looks tired. He spent all day out front on the, on the shumps. He needs to lie down. Andre Amadoff EF is being handed beers by a Bahrain Victoria Swanya. Uh, they all know each other from previous lives, but basically, if you're someone with a beer now on the Champs Elysees, it's going to be a rider who's going to try and take it out of your hand. Milan Erzin of Bahrain Victoria's team is uh, on the course and he's handing out glasses wow. of He's got champagne. a lot of champagne there. A lot of champagne. He's put a glass down very delicately, not spilled any of it. Should we keep walking down? Benim Gourmet coming past. Saying hello to. One of the UAE, um, Sonia is a mechanic. We're in the way now. We should keep walking. Yeah, we can walking. Doesn't see me. It's okay. It's fine. Uh, now we're coming up to the uh, Israel Premier Tech sort of station. Sylvan Adams is uh, giving a little speech. All the riders are gathered around on the team uh, with champagne glasses, pointing at all of them. Uh, one at a time. One at a time. You are it's, beautiful. Uh, yeah. You are beautiful. Oh, he loves it. <laughs> Egan Bernal just rode past. He's very emotional to finish the Rui, tour. Rui Costa. Rui Costa's got to be near the end of his career, right? Mm -hmm. If he's not 40 yet, he will be 40 soon. Yeah. And that's all we have on Rui Costa's age. Haven't seen Peter Sagan yet at the end of his final Tour de France. No. Uh, Sylvain Dillier is about to come up on us. He's got his phone out. 
Matthew van der Poel's here. Oh, Kaylee stepped to maybe try and interview him, but there was <laughs> no chance of that one. Here comes Rigoberto Uran. Ah, look at the hair. It's so good. Okay. Flowing. Flowing. Should we chat with the Groovers? Uh, they don't have on the move, are they? Oh, nope. They're stepping. Are you happy to be done? Yes, I am. Are you happy to be done? Yes, I'm very happy to be done. <laughs> What's your favorite photo? Oh my god, I don't know. Don't ask me that question. Uh, uh, oh, I can't think of anything. It's amazing. You just said that, and I can't. I can't. I don't remember a single picture I've taken now. The one in the beetle of Tade, giant the scarab thing. Oh yeah, yeah, that was cool. Yeah, that, I'll go with that one. Yeah. We used it today on the website. That's why. That was sweet. I really like that one. Thank you for reminding me that I took a good picture of this store. <laughs> <laughs> I can't remember anything now. Uh, congrats on being done another one. Thank you. You too. You guys can keep walking. I know you've work to do. Are you still working? Uh, I think I might be leaving. Oh. Yeah, I, I think I'm ready to go. I don't ever feel like we need to shoot podium stuff, so it's it's good. I think now's a good time. Peace, Peace Groovers. Thank you, guys. That was awesome. Yeah. Well, I think we should. Um, I think we should take a pause. Yeah, I think and that's. And we're uh, gonna we're gonna come back together in just a minute and and wrap the the Tour de France. Nice. Yeah. Once we can sort of like. Oh, but I have just seen out in the corner of my Tom Verkler. Oh, swole Tom Verkler. Swole Tom Verkler. <laughs> I'm too scared to even approach him. <laughs> I don't. I don't. The, the negative of the interaction outweighs a potential positive. <laughs> I just. I just got a, a nod of acknowledgement at, from Tom Verkler, so I can go home now. <laughs> That's all I ever needed. I think he he weighs significantly more than he used to, and it's all muscle. It's all muscle. <laughs> let's let's take a break. Yeah. We're still, we are still on the Champs Elysees, but we're gonna, we're gonna do our little wrap from here. I think. What if, what, what, if, what else needs to be said about this, about this Tour de France? It was just won by Jonas Vingago. The stage, we're pretty sure, was won by Jordi Mayos. Uh, congratulations to him. Johnny's now opening up the internet to confirm that that is the case. What else is there to say about this tour? I want to ask, what is your favorite memory of this tour? What is my favorite memory of this yes. tour? Yes. Probably getting a little nod from Swole Tom Vokler. Really? <laughs> no. You've got real recency bias, Kaylee. <laughs> uh, favorite moment of this tour? Probably our dinner, our chicken dinner in bourg en bresse For all the weirdest reasons. Yeah, but I would was say lovely. that's true. I always like the the days when we just go on course the whole day. So when we went up uh, the Tourmalet, it's just a day where you are actually in the Tour de France instead of like around it. Uh, but this is pretty close, I would say. I think the Champs is always just fun. Everyone's everyone's mood is so light; uh, it just floats off into the evening. Uh, just smiles, smiles instead of stress. Uh, yeah, fantastic. I'm Joshua Robinson. Say you're only here for a bit of the tour because you have to go cover the tennis. Do you have a favorite moment of the tour? or? Uh, I think every moment with you guys was my favorite moment. He's been media trained very well. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to say chicken dinner. What about our winner? Jonas Vingergo. What else? There goes Peter Sagan. He's still, we were talking about this at... at um, we, we were grabbing beers with the Cycling Weekly crew the other night, and we, uh, we were talking about, or I was, I guess, holding court as my, with my oldness and the fact that I covered most of Peter's career and um, trying to explain how crazy it was at his peak and how I actually still haven't seen a rider with the same reception. Because you guys were commenting on the fact that, that he still gets these crazy ovations at the starts, even though he didn't do a damn thing this entire Tour de France. And he's done now. It, it's, it's, it's a shame... I think to see him go out like this, kind of like with a with a nothing. I mean, it makes you wonder like how long ago he should have gone out. 
No, you gotta you gotta take that lucrative contract and make the money to set you up. You can't, you know, that's where you earn when you're at your peak. You earn that final contract, and also it gives you time to sort of soak it all in what you've done. Like you know, riding riding down the shops, riding around the tour. But when you're not at the point end, you have the time to take it all in and sort of process it. So I think for him, you know, he probably didn't like all the mountains and stuff like that, but he probably enjoyed having like a final tour experience where he's very present in the moment. Yeah, and he still got cheered everywhere because he's still Peter Sagan. So. I mean, we can never know. It's probably deep within his soul what he feels. What uh, final thoughts on Jonas Vingago uh, as a two-time Tour de France champion? Uh, I've kind of come around to him in the last couple days. We've gotten a little more access to him. I've just been kind of watching him more. Because if we just go off of his interactions with us sort of in a more formal setting... He, he remains a somewhat frustrating figure, I think, for those of us in the media who are, are I mean, frankly, like, we're, it's our job to write stories, and when they don't say much, that just makes our job harder. But just watching him, he's, he's I, yeah, I've, I've just kind of come around to it, particularly watching him with his family. I think that it, it kind of put into context for me all the times that he mentions his family, that the, the, the sort of emphasis he puts on, the sacrifice, being away from them, all these things that... I think we kind of underplay because we show up here and, and we forget that, you know, this month is the culmination of eight months, right? And those eight months are all about these individuals, their families, their their close friends, their, their riding partners. And then this is, we just see, you know, we see the crest of the wave, right? But it's been, it's been building for a very, very long time. And I think when you sort of think about Vingigo from that perspective, one, I, th I think it, it, it's easier to understand him, and, I, and two, I think it's easier to find him a slightly more empathetic figure. Yeah, and I think he's also the perfect rival for Tadej Pogacar. You know, someone who will respond to all of his attacks, his personality. With, Except with, his with, attack today. With the opposite. Apart from the attack today, which is great. I kind of didn't really notice that happening, and then suddenly he was off front. I was like, this is fun. Um, <laughs> But yeah, with 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 Jonas Vingo, I think he probably doesn't even want everyone to love him in in this, you know, in that way. Like he he clearly doesn't mind about that, and that's absolutely fine. He's amazing at riding his bike. He's come here to win the jersey, win the yellow jersey. He's done it. I'm sure, as you know, he's, he's not been around for that long, really, in terms of in the in the mind's eye of the tour. So we'll get to know him better. There'll be more more. There won't continue to be ups and ups and ups. There'll be ups and downs. That's when you really get to find out who these riders are and you understand them a bit better. We're currently watching uh, fans being chucked hat. It's like the final caravan of the tour, except it's an Israel Premier Tech soigneur. But yeah, I think Jonas Vingo, even if like, you know, sometimes we are critical of his sort of lack of buoyancy in terms of his interactions and what we get to see as, you know, public facing, but it's not, it shouldn't all be judged on that. He's I won mean, the tour twice. That's I also think that there are two things here. I think there are some riders who will always say more on the bike than they do with their mouth. And I also think that, like, Vinga Goat has been pretty much on top. And even though he's had some ups and downs, it might take, like, a really surprising and humiliating defeat to open him up in the same way it did with Pogacar, with Roglic. Yep. Like, I think that really... Uh, because then at a certain point, you kind of need, need the press in a way you didn't before. Because when you're winning, you don't have to answer... Like, the really tough questions in terms of, like, well, the emotional bits. Well, and it just humanizes them. Of like course. That, that's the reality is, is that dominance is, that doesn't feel human. And, and that's, you know... When, I don't when, like that, but it's Well, true. but when, when the keep runs, it's, uh, you know, not of this earth kind of headlines. Yeah, they're, they're potentially sort of cast, casting aspersions. But, like, the reality is that those incredible performances, they are... They, they feel inhuman until they suddenly come crashing down to earth, Right. And that's what makes them feel human once again. So I do think that that sort of losing is really important to the narrative of any of these athletes. And for a lot of them, it just takes a long time. I want to make a remark about eras. Because there's been this urge for the last, I don't know, four years or so to be like, we're in this era. We're in the Pogacar era. We're in the Vingegaard era. But everything is like the time scale of these successes is getting more and more and more compressed. And I would say that like, we're not in an era right now. You know what I mean? Like in terms of... No. No. I don't think you could be in an era in a Tour de France that was 10 seconds apart until the third week. That's not an era of no. either of them. And so I like mean, the dominance narrative gets kind of funny when they just aren't all winning all the time. 
The era of the two? The era the of... Pogaccio, Vingogo, Duopoli? Yeah, I guess. The era is their rivalry. That's what this, this period will be remembered for. But how long will the... You could you would never know Skelmos could win next year. Yeah, exactly. And that's, you know... That's that, what, two that's years what is not an back. era. Kayleigh's shaking his head. <laughs> Kayleigh's really jelly. Um, guys, we've got a couple of corners to deal with first. Completely slipped my mind until I realised we were getting towards it. Oh. Oh, it was close. Jordi Moose with a better bike throw. It looks like one on the bike throw. Long arms. Yeah, we just got the the photo finish just came across in the sort of ASO media group, and it was very, very close. Incredible bike throw. Philipson didn't quite get it. I think that's great. I think Jordi Moose deserves a uh, ah deserves a stage win. He's been close a couple times already this tour. One nice, nice surprise in a tour full of surprises. I would have just liked to see if uh, Jasper Philipson had won, whether we'd have finally got a smile out of Christoph Rudolph. Uh, right, down to the more important business. Maya Sabo. Maya Sabo, yes. Sabo. <laughs> Maya Sabo. There's a reason why I don't learn French and learn a different unmentioned no. language instead. Who was the Maya Sabo yesterday? Does anyone remember? Was it Chris Harper? No, it was Ben O'Connor. Chris Harper was very close. Well, in 17th place, with a time of one hour, four minutes, 59 seconds, maybe a large winning margin, I would say. Usually that's, that's a big bit, margin. It's a big margin. Yeah. It's Ben O'Connor. Congratulations, Ben O'Connor. I. We'll, we'll, we'll be in contact. We'll be in touch. Uh, <laughs> maybe when he's had a chance to recover and maybe see the the sense of humor of finishing an hour down when he came into Target GC. We'll, we'll decide whether that's something we want to broach with him and maybe potentially kill that relationship forever. Um, so yeah, congratulations. Uh, either side, Wilco Kelderman in 18th, one hour, six minutes, 46 seconds. In 16th, Chris Harper, 57 minutes, 29 wow, seconds. Wow, Landa not even podium in the Malasavla. No, he was one hour, 12. Not good enough. We don't have a jury report yet, so we can't do a you're in trouble. Uh, no one could be in trouble on the Shumps. Whatever it says, disregard yeah, it. Yeah, the not Shumps. Real. The Shumps is like being baptized. It's uh, your <laughs> your sins are forgiven. You know. <laughs> it's uh, there will be fines though because the commissaire's got to pay for an expensive dinner in Paris tonight. So you can best believe every single errant <laughs> bottle or infraction was penalised today. I think it's time to wrap up. I think uh, yeah. The sun is not, it's not quite setting where it's actually a bit earlier than, than it has been previous years. But um, honestly, the real reason why we need to, to wrap, one, we have been talking for three weeks. Yeah. And we are done talking. Two, the Tour de France is not over. Oh. Take a brief pause. All right. I don't know how much you, you all in the in the audience out there can hear the background music, but it's the perfect background music for the end of the of the men's Tour de France Tour Daily. As I said, the tour is not over. Matt and Abby are down in Clermier. They're gonna have another episode today. It's gonna be double episode day, and they're gonna be covering the race until next weekend. I'd just like to quickly say that. You know, even a few months ago, there was a fairly large chance that we wouldn't actually be standing here on the, this, these cobbled streets right now. We wouldn't be at the tour. We wouldn't have spent three weeks traveling around, having a, you know, a great time. You know, going to the Tour de France ranks amongst your best moments in life. And the only reason it's possible is because back in March, we asked you all to sort of sign up and join our, our new enterprise. And you did. And it's why we've managed to keep on writing articles, recording these podcasts, generally getting back to what we were doing before, but hopefully better. And this tour, it's been been my best tour. And that's because of all of the sort of interactions in Discord, people sending tips, people sending funny little comments, all that conversation. And that's actually what's made this tour for me. 
is it's felt like we've been traveling and doing every podcast, writing every article with everyone like right there. And that's something that I never really thought would ever happen while reporting on the tour. Yeah, we, we feel like we're your reporters, which is a cool yeah. feeling. Like we go, you ask us questions, we go find the answers. You, yeah. you wonder how something works, we go figure it out. We, it, it's a very different experience than I think for either of us in any of the tours that, that we've yeah. covered. And yeah, to echo that, Johnny, uh, uh, thank you to everybody out there who yeah. either right when we kicked off in March or any time since uh, or you know right now all of you you're the reason we're here yeah I'm not big on not big on being sentimental or not very good at being sentimental uh, so it's hard to sort of accurately portray that but it's a very profound sense of uh, of thanks to all of you thank you everyone and thank you for all the people who leave nice comments on my posts <laughs> that makes me very happy I and uh <laughs> We're not supposed to say that, but it's true. I like the mean ones. <laughs> thank you to, thank you, Kate, for joining us this, this last week. Thank you to Ian, who left us to go back to his family. Yep. Thank you to Joshua Robinson of the Wall Street Journal, who's been a great ally and friend this tour, has picked us up in sort of more tired moments, introduced us to a lot of things on either side of the spectrum of both respectability and I'd just say class. You know, we've had nice dinners, We've had uh, chats that we probably wouldn't, shouldn't have at those nice dinners. But thank you very much, Josh. You. No, th thank you, guys. And speaking as a fan of you guys, I'm just so impressed with the work you guys do, the, the stuff you put out there, and the, the good spirits you're always in. So thanks for including me and, you know. Oh, we couldn't do it without you. I'm out here as a fan. There was a, there was a number of people on Discord who were very angry that he was not named best friend. Do we need to knock Zach off the pedestal? What's like, is best friend emeritus? Isn't that given to the best friend above the best friend? So my, my thing was that Josh has, has sort of superseded best yeah. friend. He is, he's gone beyond best friend of the Tour de France yeah. and into just friend. You're just a friend. <laughs> and that's the best thing to do. Anyway. All right, everybody, thank you for listening. Head on over to catch today's other episode from the Tour de France Femme. We'll be back. I don't even know. I don't even know. I got a lot of time coming up. <laughs> off coming up. <laughs> we'll be back. Bye bye. I forgot to say thank you to you, Kaylee. I guess you kind of put a lot of this together. So thanks. I don't deserve anything. Thank you. Bye bye. <laughs> <laughs>